self-titled album from Barsha Sketh. I hope I've done that justice. I feel like I've done that justice. And it's the fourth album from the New Zealand... They're not New Zealand based. They are New Zealanders. But they have come from Scotland. They are emanating out of Scotland. Because I often think when I'm visiting New Zealand that I would much rather be in Scotland. But never mind. Um, they are a black male outfit from New Zealand via... Well, Scotland via New Zealand. And for me, this is my first through and through black metal album. Um, the closest I've I checked back and closest I've been to before was the Unflesh album, which was like episode one or two. And so I want to give like a benchmark, I guess, for me and my relationship with black metal. So I might be the worst black metal fan ever which is not the best way to start off a review about a black metal band. Basically, I am a self-proclaimed production snob. I, I don't like, despite like me really like enjoying punk rock and hardcore, I don't, when it comes to metal, I don't enjoy the old raw sound, particularly in black metal, because I think it just all like sort of fades into like one noise, which for a lot of people, that is the appeal of black metal. That's why it's so aggressive and dangerous which is fair enough but i prefer more um i guess high production i don't want to use the word clean because black metal is not a clean genre by any stretch of imagination but that high production line is much more my kind of thing so as an example last year watain came out with trident wolf eclipse it was highly regarded a lot of people really enjoyed it and i it did nothing for me because even the like lead single which was nuclear holocaust i think nuclear alchemy it was okay but because it just sort of like all the reverb and the echo and noise it just all blended into like a noise to me and it didn't really do anything for me whereas the wild hunt from 2013 an album which a lot of fans really didn't like because it had a much bigger sound incorporated folk elements folk elements and like i said it was a a lot nice on production i really enjoyed that and in fact if i went back to listen go through all the albums of 2013 that i listened to i think the wild hunt might be up there as one of my favorites um and another one another example is the big mayhem album so what's what, something like that d mysterious day satanicus something like that i've tried to listen to that so many times because of like the not even cult following just the absolute following that he has and i just can't do it because the production's a bit iffy and like i said for some people for people who are die hard into black metal that might very well be the thing more power to you if you like what you like go for it but it's not for me so as that as my bench post you can do, like skip on to the next album or do what you want just that's where i stand with black metal for me this album by bash Sketh sits more on that well-produced side um, you can hear every instrument being played in all the little nuances and I'll get more to that in a bit. Um, the album's still full of all like, the black metal characteristics that you'd expect. So it's got sinister growl vocals. It's got them growled vocals. Uh, tremolo guitar work. Insanely thunderous drums. And the drum work in this album is fucking incredible. Um, and there's like a drum... Like I said, drum work in this out is incredible. There's lots of little fills or little plays on the rhythm throughout the album that keep things interesting. So in the first song, um, Vacillation or Vacillation, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that word. Uh, there's a section where the prominence is on the bass drum. It's around 1 minute 30. And the way it's mixed and the way the um, bass drum is going, it feels like it's trying to reset your heartbeat. because Especially on headphones because it's just... It is the most affluent thing that's happening at that moment. And it feels really jarring in a good way, as only black metal can do. Um, and before I go further, there's a section around 250 on Vacillation, where I only heard it on headphones after like a third or fourth listen. But in the background, there is this terrifying, shrill so sound. Um, if I keep hitting my phone again. I don't know whether it's a scream. I think it is uh, a 
note on the guitar, so quite low down on the neck, the bottom string stretched, all that, or bend, sorry, all that sort of thing. But it just plays right in the far distance, and it just adds that incredibly terrifying world that you get put into for a black metal album. And it just, it's just, just always a sound emanating from somewhere. There's no quiet um, level in this album. And yeah, just little, like I said, little things like that. Uh, Into Ruin 2, in the middle of the full feel, like Black Metal Barrage, or like Blast Beats and that kind of thing, the drums aren't just doing like the fast double kick bass, like... I can't, I can't double kick because I'm wearing socks. Um, yeah, it's not just doing that, it's doing more like rhythmic two shots, so like... And for some... I, I really, really enjoy that. I must have like just skipped over that part so many times just to like go back and listen to it, listen to it, listen to it. And then a similar sort of thing happens again in Rebirth, where it's just more, I didn't make a note like the time stamp on it, but it's just more short bursts of bass, it's like little triplets instead of just like constant stream. And it just, to me, it felt more chaotic and a bit more offensive because it just feels kind of like artillery, which is really cliche to say about drums on a black metal album, but it is, everyone feels like, like low rumble when it's just like double kick bass, when it's just like... It just feels like you're physically being attacked. Um, all the little nuances and all that like plays with the time signature sort of thing. I would not by any means consider this a progressive album. This is just a very intelligent black metal album to me. Um, I do enjoy the fact that the mood and the atmosphere of the album. Excuse me. Um, it, they seem to come exclusively from the instruments. And I've looked up more about Barsha Skeff, and they do have two members of the band who do um, synth work on the um, album. But I didn't really notice it, I didn't really spot it or like pick up on it. It feels like it's very organic sound, so it's all coming from like the shrill guitars, the really interesting drum work, the eerie vocals. The only complaints I really have about the album is the first half of the album is a bit of a slow burner, it tends to pick up uh, Track four, um, consciousness, consciousness two. Um, first three, first three or four songs, like I said, are they're interesting, but they just don't have the same effect as the second half. And oh, I feel like a dick saying this, cause I think it might be more me than the album. But in the moment, once you listen to it, this is a very ferocious album. You know, the usual head butting a building, biting the head off an orphan, that kind of church burning stuff. As soon as it stops, though, I didn't want to go back in straight away. I didn't want to repeat the album, which, as like a retrospect, when I was reviewing the Tally's album last week, as soon as that finished, I was more than happy to start from again and listen to it all the way through to try and pick up anything else that I missed. I don't know whether that's just because I'm not the most well-versed with black metal or what. I'd be very interested to find out what other people think. For me, it was a case of, as soon as it finished, I was like, I need to listen to something else because it's, there was just so much going on. Um, but like I said, I feel like that's more of a me thing because I am a well-renowned pussy. But like I said, I'll be if other people find it, because it's getting weirdly bad reviews online, um, at least the places I looked, which I think is unfair. This is a really, really interesting album. I know interesting is usually reserved for, oh yeah, it's really interesting when you really want to say it's really shit, but this is genuinely a really, really cool album. Um, with my limited knowledge of um, black metal, I'd say I compared it a lot to Bayamoth more than Immortal, but because, like I said, it's got that like dark atmosphere behind it. So I think Bayamoth, Immortal, and a newer black metal band that came out in the last couple of years called, and they're in German again, De Weg Eine Freiheit. Um, yeah, I got that right. They're another band who like sort of like build up tension and ambiance just for their um, just for their instruments and their like extra production. And they do they don't just like stick to everything needs to be the same. They do like to put in this little like twists and variables here here and there. So yeah, Immortal, Behemoth, The Virgo, Iron, Freyheart. If you like any of them, I really think you will enjoy the self-titled album from. And one more time, Barsha Skeff. 
It's just too many S's. I can't deal. Uh, moving on to... 